Welcome everybody to CCA Ask Me Anything and tonight we're going to be asking just about anything to Lisa Weagle, team uh, lead for Team Rachel Holman and I guess we just don't call you Team Rachel Holman anymore, we call you Canadian Champions. This is the reigning champions from the Scotties Tournament of Hearts last year in uh, 2013, last season at Kingston, Ontario. Lisa, thanks for joining us and uh, yet again striking a blow for leads all over the world of curling. Uh, we've got to give those leads more respect and uh, obviously <laughs> you struck a blow last year at the Scotties, winning the MVP award in the final uh, against Jennifer Jones. Uh, just talk a little bit. First of all, welcome to the show tonight. And, uh, thanks, thanks for so having for me. Yeah. Just talk a little bit about how, yeah, just talk a little bit about how the season's gone for Team Holman so far. Uh, it's been a good season so far. Um, it's kind of a different year than the last couple of years on the team because we're really trying to peak in December for the Olympic trials. So, um, you know, everything we're doing right now is just kind of building for December. Right. You know, you talk about that, uh, building for the trials, and of course we're referring to the uh, the Tim Hortons War of the Rings Canadian Curling Trials beginning December 1st at the MTS Centre in Winnipeg. Uh, Lisa's team is one of six already qualified on the women's side. How is that changing your approach to this season in terms of the way you guys peak? Because typically you'd want to peak one peak at your Ontario Championship and then yeah. ideally another peak at the Scotties. How has that changed kind of the mental side of the game for you guys? Um, well, it's changed a lot, like even just uh, our schedule. You know, last year we needed a lot of points to make sure that we qualified for the trials, so we played a lot of events. Um, and this year, you know, points don't really matter. It's it's just about being ready and working on those few little things that we think are going to be difference makers for us come December. Um, and also, you know, we don't have to play through our playdowns, through zones, regions, provincials to get uh, to the Scotties. So. Um, you know, it's been a little bit different, but it's also been really nice that we're just really able to to focus on that one event, as well as, you know, using these events leading up to it as a tune-up, like in Calgary last weekend, and we're in Gatineau this coming weekend, and then Abbotsford, which will be a great event. There's a lot of really good teams in that, so uh, just kind of looking to build and improve on everything that we're doing. Well, folks, this is how it works on Ask Me Anything. You get your questions into me, and I get to ask them to, uh, to Lisa. You can get your questions into us on Twitter at twitter.com slash CCA Curling. Use the hashtag CCAAMA, or else on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash CCA Curling. And we've got a pile of questions already coming in uh, for Lisa. First of all, uh, from uh, at Chow Allen. Uh, he asks, hi Lisa, do you regularly play a second sport? And if you could be a star and be a winner in another sport beside curling, what would it be? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I used to play softball. I was, uh, you know, like just kind of recreational league. Um, I really like running. Uh, I go to the gym, practice yoga, but uh, I don't really have a lot of time to to play another sport. I think I might take up golf in the spring, so maybe that would be a good one. Um, and I think that would be a fun one to be good at. But if you could be a star, what would you like to star at? A star? Um, I don't know, maybe golf? That would be a good, uh, like, yeah, I don't know, the, on the LPGA, like, it seems like they, they do pretty well for themselves. Curling's not really the sport where you're making a lot of money. I don't know really <laughs> what women's sport would be. Breaking maybe news, track? eh? <laughs> yeah, that would be good too, no doubt. Yeah. Here we got one from uh, at Otgal, and I'm sure uh, you have a long association with at Otgal. Lisa, be honest. That's you, I believe, is it not? That's your Twitter I'm handle. Otgal, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, then this is a question from uh, Chris Post, at Postman87. Okay. Then, Lisa, be honest. How much did you practice that patented tick shot? It's unreal, and best of luck <laughs> at the roar. Thank you. Um, you know, I practice it on a regular basis. It's... Um, you know, it's just like practicing draws or takeouts or anything else. It's uh, a shot that I regularly play, so, you know, I regularly practice it. Well, now that we've started talking about the tick shot, obviously that was a, a shot that sort of uh, changed, the, changed the playing field a little bit at the Scotties last year in Kingston. Not so much the fact that you guys played it, but when you played it. Can you talk a little bit about the evolution of that strategy uh, last year and uh, kind of how cool it was to see so many people uh, taking notice of, of leads because uh, that's a shot that traditionally was not played till the ninth and 10th ends. Yeah, and you know, by playing it in the ninth and 10th end, it was just something that we started practicing. You know, it's a difficult shot to play and um, as a lead when you're called upon to play it in the 10th end, you know, you want to have some confidence and know that you've, you've rehearsed it in practice. So we started playing it more and more in practice and kind of experimenting with it in 
other situations during games and started using it a bit more on tour last year kind of in earlier ends and um, that's kind of how it evolved to the point where we were using it at the Scotties and I guess people started taking notice of what we were doing. Um, I don't know, it's a fun shot to play. I like playing it. My teammates, uh, you know, make it look easy sometimes, but you need to have the broom in the right place and good sweepers and, you know, good line and weight judging. So, um, yeah. I think it is one of the mo the best kind of team shots there is, really, because mm -hmm. it is such a precise shot and sweeping and line calling are, are such yeah. a big part of it. Yeah, and, and you, you know, if it doesn't go well, then we're in a lot of trouble, right? I mean, <laughs> the, the ends don't, we're bailing for, for a lot of the shots, right. you know, after that, so there is some risk to playing it, I guess. Have you noticed on tour this season a lot more teams uh, employing the strategy? Yeah, I've seen some teams playing it. Um, Eve played it against us. They play it across the face. Um, and I think, you know, a few other teams are using it uh, maybe a little bit more than just kind of ninth and 10th end. Right. And I don't imagine you're going to want to give everything away, but uh, I, I, knowing what I know about uh, your team and, uh, and your coach, Earl Holman, I imagine the game plan is still a work in process and you'll probably have a few tricks up your sleeve left for when you get to Winnipeg. Yeah, you know, we're always kind of working on developing different strategies and different ways of um, setting up ends. So um, that's something we're still playing with on tour right now, and we'll see what happens in December, I guess. <laughs> Nobody wants to give anything away to me. Jeez, no. man, just give me a little <laughs> trick here. I don't, no doubt here. Here's a question from uh, on Facebook from Maddie Coulter. Uh, with your team being so young and just a few years out of juniors and just starting your careers, how difficult has it been, or was it, fi to find a job at an organization to allows you the flexibility to curl competitively? And also, how hard has it been personally trying to balance work and curling in your life? That's a good question. Um, I have a little bit of, of a different situation from my teammates. I took a couple of years away from competitive curling, and uh, when I was in university, I took the co-op program at the University of Ottawa and ended up working in the government. So right now I work uh, with Sport Canada, Canadian Heritage, and it's a really great job. And they've actually let me take a three-month leave um, just to train for the Olympic trials. So, um, you know, they're super supportive. It's really great to work in an environment with people who, um, you know, really understand sport and are, are supportive of athletes. Um, for my teammates, it's been, you know, a little bit tougher because they've played competitively since they were, you know, just to, like bantams and junior. Um, so, you know, I think it is tough, but, but we all kind of understand what kind of opportunities we have as well and that, you know, maybe putting curling first for a little while is, isn't such a bad thing. It's pretty exciting what we get to do. Well, you talked about your job in, at Sport Canada and you do a little bit of what I do on the communication mm -hmm. side for them and uh, I know you got uh, an amazing opportunity last summer to go to London for the Paralympics. Just talk a little bit about what that was like and what an inspiring experience that was for you that you probably brought back and shared with your teammates. Yeah, London was amazing. Um, I was there uh, as a communications advisor so I was working doing some communications work for the department as well as supporting the Minister of Sport when he was there. Um, and it was fantastic because I got to go to a lot of the competitions and see the venues. I got to see what the Athletes Village was like and their accommodations, um, like the dining hall, security, accreditation, like all these things that go into the major games that, you know, you wouldn't really see at a World Championships where curling is just the only sport that's happening there. Um, which, I, you know, I think that that multi-games environment can be very overwhelming uh, for athletes your first time there or maybe every time there. Um, so that was really neat to see and also, you know, just seeing the pride of all the athletes and when they're standing on the podium and they're wearing the maple leaf and hearing Oh Canada, you know, like that's, it's so inspiring to me. So, uh, you know, it was a really great experience all around. No doubt. Once again, you can get your questions in for uh, Lisa Weagle through our Twitter feed, uh, twitter.com slash CCA curling, use the hashtag CCAAMA or on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash CCA Curling. A lot more questions rolling in tonight. Uh, Raquel Bachman asks, talk, uh, asks, what is your pregame routine? What do you uh, guys do as a team? What do you do as individuals? Um, I like to get to the rink probably about 45 minutes, half an hour before game time. I really like to do a long warm-up. Um, and usually, you know, we'll have a team meeting before the game, kind of talk strategy, talk rocks, um, you know, any kind of, a different game plan we want to play for the first couple ends. 
Um, and then that's about it. I mean, for some of the bigger events, like at the Scotties, we'll all listen to music and when we do our warm up and really try and, and get focused and come together as a team. Um, before like the Scotties final, I know we would try and do things like play catchphrase or play cards before the game just to kind of um, take our minds off off the pressure and just really um, relax and also just get ready to play the game. Here's another question that just came in from uh, Danny Sugimoto on Facebook. How often do you practice as a team and when you practice alone, talk about what kind of drills you'll do by yourself. Also he asks, uh, do you ever skip or play vice in any other league? <laughs> no, I'm a lead. <laughs> I don't really... <laughs> I don't really have any desire to play back end. I really love playing front end and lead especially. So uh, we actually don't play in a league right now. We, uh, we're just practicing. Um, as a team, we practice pretty often together. Uh, we've all kind of stepped back from our work responsibilities. So um, we're able to... Sorry, that's Robin just coming home. <laughs> uh, we're... Um, yeah, we all practice together on a pretty regular basis. Uh, when I am alone... Um, I'll, you know, I'm a lead, so it's really nice that I can practice draws by myself. I'll just try and throw maybe um, four, eight draws to the same position and try and um, throw the same weight, or sometimes I'll throw like a tight guard, then go behind top four and kind of adjust my weights um, and try and get the same line. I don't know. There's, there's lots of drills you can do when you're alone, um, but it's always better to practice with a teammate, I think. No doubt. Uh... Funny that Robin just walked in because I was just about to ask a question of your from your fiance. He submitted earlier today. He wants to know uh, uh, if you name the rocks that you throw, and if you do, where did that tradition come from? <laughs> um, so Robin is a new curler. He's been curling for I think maybe one season, two seasons, kind of recreationally, and he names his rocks Oney and Tui. So um, <laughs> he thinks that that's what I should name them. And I don't know if it's a new curler thing, but he comes home from his games and he tells me how many times one e and two he scored. So as lead rocks, how often his score, I don't know. I think it's a team game. It doesn't really um, matter how many times your own rocks score, but I guess that's, that's the way he thinks of it. How sweet. <laughs> Nicely done, Robin. Uh, here's a question. This is one of my favorite Twitter, uh, Twitter guides, by the way. At Curling Yoda, always entertaining. At mm -hmm. Curling Yoda wants to know who your favorite Star Wars character is and why. Well, we both know that, right? Come on. Well, it's got to be Yoda. That's a gimme. <laughs> but why? Why? I, I don't really know any other Star Wars characters, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Curling Yoda is awesome. He uh, has done a lot of really neat things with Photoshop uh, for our team, so we really enjoy his Twitter feed and his photos. Here's a, here's a great question that I don't think gets asked enough of our of our high performance curlers. It's from at Emma Wright 97. What advice do you have for new curlers? Oh, we um, we met Emma in Brockville actually. Um, she's just starting, um, and I guess the advice I would give is practice a lot of practice and also just to study the game. Um, Emma's been coming out to some of our games and watching, and we've heard that she's you know watched a lot of games on TV, and that's great because that's a really good way to learn. Um, and you can try some of the things that you see on TV in practice. Um, and it seems like she's also got a really good support system. That's something that's really important to our team. Um, her parents are really supportive of her curling, and that's something that we've had um, for a really long time, which uh, it goes a long way. Did you ever, do you ever watch video of yourself? Like, have you watched the final from last year in Kingston against Jennifer Jones? And, and if so, just... How cool an experience was it to watch you guys perform at a high level under those kind of circumstances? Um, yeah, sometimes I'll watch video. I find it really hard to, to watch myself. I don't know, I get really anxious when I watch the games. But uh, <laughs> we did watch some video this summer with a purpose, right? We're watching for um, you know, our communication mostly or sweeping or trying to find areas where we could be a little bit better. Um, yeah, it's, it's always neat to watch, and it, it's a learning experience, right? as long as you can take something away from it. Yeah, you're not watching to see if your hair was right or something like that, obviously no. not. So <laughs> that, it's, yeah, and, you know, talk a little bit about the influence that, uh, that Earl Morris has on that uh, process as well. Obviously one of the most respected coaches in, in curling, uh, worked with Rachel since she was a, a little girl, and, uh, and you've obviously uh, come aboard with the team in the last few years to, to work with Earl. What kind of influences has he had on the team and the way you guys work? 
Yeah, Earl is a, a great coach and, you know, really great for our team. I think he's um, a really great strategic mind, which is something that we, that really helps us. And um, we have a lot of respect for him. He's uh, really organized and super passionate about coaching our team um, and passionate about curling. You know, he's not just out helping us. He's the club pro at our curling club, the Ottawa Curling Club. He's helping and mentoring other teams and other coaches. And, you know, he's really just so passionate about the sport and uh, that really comes through in his coaching. And uh, one of the more interesting guys out there to talk to. You never know mm -hmm. where Earl's going to come from <laughs> with a coaching strategy. So, uh, and I, in my past life as a journalist, he was one of the most fascinating guys I ever talked to. Always had some uh, some great insights. And then mm -hmm. I imagine his role with his team is even more important this year, considering what's going to unfold in Winnipeg. And just talk a little bit about the importance of having confidence going into that event because as we as we both know that's you know it's probably the well not even probably it's the toughest event in the curling world to win uh, because mm -hmm. just based on the depth of the teams and what's on the line I mean what has what has he been doing I imagine you guys are working with team psychologists sports psychologists what what's the process to kind of get into the mindset to believe you can win in Winnipeg yeah, it's going to be um, a tough field. We've never played in the trials before and, uh, you know, obviously we're a little bit nervous heading in there, but we're trying to do as much as we can to build our confidence and make sure that we really leave no stone unturned, so to speak. And so, you know, we've been trying to prepare as much as we can in the summer with our workouts and all our off-season stuff. We work with a really great um, sports psychologist as well, Natalie Duran Bush. Um, and she and Earl kind of work together to help us prepare for the mental side of things. And you know, we're out on the ice, we're practicing every day, we're in the gym, we're um, you know, really supporting each other and trying to build our confidence together as a team so that we're as prepared as we can be in December. It's, it, I find it interesting that two first-year winners came out of our uh, Canadian Championships last year. What, what do you think that says about the state of curling in Canada right now, Lisa? Um, I think it's a good thing for curling. I mean, uh, there's a really strong depth of field in both the, the ladies and the men's side. Um, and, you know, I don't know. It's, it, I think it's a really good thing for our sport. It's getting younger people more involved. And we've had uh, some junior curlers come up to us and say, you know, it's really exciting to see that you know, we might be able to win the Scotties too when we're in our 20s. So, you know, I think it's a good thing for the sport when you can, uh, you know, see some fresh faces as well as the veterans. I know you don't want to look past what's going to happen in Winnipeg at the trials, but it's hard not to considering what's at stake there and uh, you've been exposed to kind of the Olympic talk in your job, in your capacity with Sport Canada, as well as, you know, this season is really all about the Olympics. What did you take away from your trip uh, to Riga, Latvia last March uh, for the Women's World Championship where you won a bronze medal? What did you take away from that that would prepare you for, uh, for a trip to Sochi in the Olympics? Um, yeah, our experience in Riga was really interesting. It was uh, tough conditions and, um, you know, to go in there and play against all the international teams and I, I know we've heard it before that uh, that Maple Leaf is almost like a target on your back. Everyone wants to beat Team Canada and it's true. We had no easy games in Riga. Um, everyone played really well against us and, you know, it's a world championship so you're expecting to play against the best teams in the world. Um, I think, you know, that experience really uh, made us stronger together as a team and playing that bronze medal game you know it's it's not an easy game to play I think it's the toughest game in sport to play um, after losing the semi and you have to go right back out and um, perform and uh, to be able to do that as a team and just experience everything we did um, I think is is gonna prepare us well for the future well I was I actually led into one of the questions I had here was in terms of major victories and, and developing victories for a team, I would imagine that bronze medal victory said as much about your team as did winning the Scotties in Kingston in terms of the, the character of the team. Yeah, that took, um, it took a lot to, to get back out there and win, but you know, we, um, we talked about it in the morning and uh, we really wanted to win a medal for our country and that's what we were doing it for was uh, you know, to come back home to Canada with a medal. Once again, get your questions in for Lisa at uh, twitter.com slash CCA Curling. Use the hashtag CCA AMA, as well as uh, our Facebook site, facebook.com slash CCA Curling. Here's a question from someone you probably know, at Ellie Krev. Hmm. <laughs> Lisa, 
Who would you say is the clumsiest on the team? <laughs> I think it's a tie between me and Allie. <laughs> Um, we tell Rachel she is the clumsiest front end in curling. I think we both had our, our pretty epic spills on TSN. So. Oh yes. <laughs> in my case, a fall and a couple burn rocks. So yeah, hey. it's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> it was it was spectacular, and you finished strong. That's the main thing. That of course was uh, Allison Kravacek, uh, uh, your teammate in second, and uh, obviously Emma Miskew is the uh, is the is the third on the team, skipped by Rachel. Emma Holman. fell once oh. this year too, so we're all pretty clumsy. Did she now? Yeah, yeah. She likes to pretend it's just me and Allie, but uh, she had a spill this year as well. Rachel hasn't taken one yet. No, no. Wow. <laughs> She's solid. Time will tell, right? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Here's a question we got in um, from. Uh, I'm trying to see who the uh, who wrote it. It's, oh, uh, Puner. It looks like. Are you guys superstitious? Are there things you do before every game? Um, I think we like to keep the same routines, and if we're playing um, an event like the Scotties, where you have you know a number of games in a row, you start to. If you get on a roll, you start to kind of do the same things over and over again. So the same person sits in the front seat of the van, or you know, you listen to the same songs on the way to the rink, or something like that. Um, I don't know. We try not to be too superstitious, but I think we all have a little bit of it in us. <laughs> but no one will There's admit no to it. <laughs> no lucky socks or anything like that. Um, no, I don't. No, nothing that we'll admit to, I guess. <laughs> Well, everybody has a role on a team, though. Like, who who has the responsibility for organizing things? Uh, who has the responsibility for keeping things loose? Uh, I imagine everybody has a, a little bit of a role on the team. Yeah, everyone, you know, we've all kind of fallen into our roles. Um, Emma's super organized, so she takes on a lot um, in terms of, you know, keeping us organized and um, booking things or, you know, whatever that has to, whatever we need to get done. Usually Emma's the person you can rely on to do it. And who's the jokester? There must be a jokester. Um, we're all pretty type A except Allie, so she's the one who kind of keeps it loose <laughs> for us. If we need a laugh, usually uh, you can look to Allie and she can um, make you laugh. But I think, you know, we come off, I think, pretty serious, but we actually all uh, really like to laugh and have a good time, uh, which maybe you don't really see when the TV cameras are on. <laughs> <laughs> the heavy hitters are weighing in on Twitter. At Balgosel, the Minister of State for Sports. <laughs> That's not a bad get on Twitter, my friend. No, Let it's not. <laughs> he asked, and of course we should note that uh, Minister Gosal has actually gotten out and uh, hit the curling rinks. Uh, I believe you guys gave him a lesson last year, and he we was did. Uh, at the Scotties last year in Kingston. We uh, obviously appreciate the support of the Minister of State of Sport. He asks, he asked, he wonders, uh, which was your biggest win, uh, the Scotties or beating his staff? <laughs> uh, the minister played on my team when we taught him how to curl, so uh, he was pretty <laughs> excited to beat his staff. He's actually a pretty good curler. It was his first time ever playing, and we got him out with Earl and Craig Savile and uh, played a few ends and had a good time. Um, but I would have to say the Scotties is a bigger win. Sorry, minister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good one. I, I like that. I'd like to see the, the minister watching or ask me anything here. That's pretty cool. Uh, at Joey Taylor 9 asks, and I think you probably know Joey Taylor based on the nature of the question. <laughs> he refers to you as the Colleen G Jones of the Ottawa LGBT Curling League. So what are your thoughts? <laughs> but it leads into a pretty good question. What are your thoughts on, on different communities getting into, into the sport of curling? I think it's fantastic. We have um, a really great group at the Ottawa Curling Club, the Rainbow Rockers, and they have, I think, like three draws and um, they often host the national. I think it's really great that, uh, that they can get involved. And I know uh, Earl's been involved with getting some new Canadians out curling. So, you know, I think it, it's really great. The more people we can get involved with our sport, the better. Yeah, there's some pretty amazing leagues out there. I know here in, uh, in Calgary, there's a very thriving, uh, the Apollo League at the North Hill Curling Club for the LGBT uh, uh, community that is uh, wildly popular and uh, a great Saturday afternoon spent at the North Hill Curling Club for a lot of people there too. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's really encouraging to see that as well. Uh, a few more minutes with Lisa Weagle on CCA Ask Me Anything. Get those questions in to twitter.com slash CCA Curling with the hashtag CCA AMA or at Facebook.com slash CCA Curling. Uh, this, is a, this is a neat question from Danielle Inglis, uh, who uh, you've curled against, I'm sure, many mm -hmm. times over the years, and she's our, 
a social media guru. She wants to know what your favorite thing is about each of your teammates. And I think that's a wonderful question. My favorite thing? Um, I don't know. I've developed really great friendships with all of them. I've been on the team for four years now, and I kind of knew them a little bit uh, when they were juniors and followed their career. I was always a big fan of them. Um, they're all just really fantastic people to curl with. Um, you know, I can have really good conversations with all of them. Uh, I spend a lot of time with Ali um, as front enders, and uh, you know, we've developed a really close relationship. And um, you know, Emma and I room together, so we have a lot of fun together. We have kind of our, our nighttime routines, and um, and Rachel, you know, she's uh, I have a lot of fun with her too as well. Um, I don't know; it's hard to like pinpoint one thing, but uh, I feel really lucky that I get to curl with um, three really good friends of mine and people that I really respect and admire. Well, it's inter I've often wondered about the fact that the three of them were had been established teammates for a long time in the Ottawa area, and you kind of came on board uh, fairly fairly recently, relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. how, t how tough was it to kind of get into the mix with the other three and, and establish yourself as, as the lead on the team? You know, it wasn't really tough at all. They were really welcoming and, um, you know, it's nice to go onto a team that, that's so established and I knew that I wasn't going to come in and kind of rewrite things. They had already, you know, done everything so well that I was just trying to learn from them and get my skills up to the level that I needed them to be at from having taken a little bit of time away from competitive curling. Um, you know, they, they all get along so well and they've got this, this great history together, which I think is one of the advantages our team has, is um, team dynamics and really knowing each other well and knowing what to say and what not to say or when to give someone a little space. And, uh, you know, like when, when things get tough, like when I burnt that rock, you know, they, they had my back. And uh, that's something really special to have, I think, on our team. A couple more questions with Lisa Weagle, including this one. Uh, here's another tasty one from Robin Guy. I am, <laughs> by the way, is Twitter handle. I am Robin Guy. Can we settle it once and for all? Maple Leafs or Senators? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm marrying a Leafs fan, so I don't know. Um, I posted a Careful photo on now. Instagram. I know. So I posted this photo on Instagram a couple weeks ago during the Leafs home opener of me and Robin and my friend Darren wearing Leafs jerseys and got some negative feedback about it. But most of the feedback was from my teammates. Rachel told me I had to carry the broom bag for the rest of the season. So Wow. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty big rivalry. I don't know if I can pick. <laughs> the diplomat. I'll cheer for whoever gets further in the playoffs. <laughs> you're, spend, you're spending too much time in Ottawa in government. No wonder. You're a diplomat. Yeah, right? I am Actually, a public but... servant. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the best answer of all. <laughs> Lisa, have you, have you looked past anything that's happening in the next month or so? Do you, do you, even, look, do you even know who you're playing first in Winnipeg? Have you even looked at the, your draw, or is that just looking too far ahead? No, I've looked at the draw. I think we play um, a team from the pre-trials first. So there I can answer that at least. Um, <laughs> no, you know, I think we're just trying to take it like one step at a time. I'd be lying if we weren't, if I didn't say that we were preparing for um, the trials. But, uh, you know, it we find things are a lot easier when we break them down into like manageable chunks and smaller goals. So, you know, it can be really overwhelming when you look at the big picture, but uh, I think we really try and break it down just step by step. Do you, I mean, I ask every team this uh, that I've tried, or I've tried to ask every team that uh, has been a part of Ask Me Anything, do you go into the trials expecting that you are the team to beat? Um, yeah, I think everyone who's going in there is expecting to win it or to, you know, be the team to beat for sure. But and, at the same time, there's so many other good teams there, right? I mean, um, it's one week. It comes down to kind of how you play that week and then in that final game. Right, no doubt. Well, Lisa, it's been great. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Ask Me Anything, and thanks to everybody for getting your questions in. Lisa, obviously the very best of luck uh, for the rest of the season. Okay, thanks, Al. And uh, once again, you can get your tickets for the Tim Hortons War of the Rings Canadian Curling Trials at uh, curling.ca slash tickets. Hope you all enjoyed it. We'll be back again next week with another edition of CCA Ask Me Anything. Thanks very much, everybody.